Somebody's behind and somebody way up the ladder, and I think that ladder is the head of Universal Music Group. So, what's the real story behind the recent raid on Diddy's homes? Comedian Eddie Griffin has a wild theory, pointing fingers at Hollywood elites. But is there any truth to these claims, or is it all just smoke and mirrors? Sean Diddy Combs, the man behind Bad Boy Records, has long been a famous figure in the music industry. His rise to fame, however, might have had a significant boost from a key player in the game. Clive Davis. Known for shaping the careers of icons like Whitney Houston and Brandy, Davis's involvement with Diddy is said to have been deeply influential. There's chatter that he and Clive Davis shared more than just casual meetings. They had a partnership that skillfully navigated Diddy through the industry's maze, giving him an upper hand. Over five years, this partnership reportedly went beyond advice over coffee. Switching gears, Eddie Griffin, the comedian, has thrown it into his two cents, claiming that the recent raid on Diddy's homes was more spectacle than substance. According to Griffin, this elaborate raid, executed with what seemed like an army by Homeland Security, might have been staged. He's accusing Clive Davis of potentially orchestrating this to divert attention or protect his reputation. Griffin didn't skip words about the mess the agents left behind either. He was particularly bothered by the disorder in Diddy's mansion, mentioning that even the camera crews seemed to have an advanced knowledge of the raid. Despite this, Diddy remains a fortress of calm, not revealing much, keeping his cards close to his chest. Rumor has it, Diddy has been taping every behind-the-scenes moment, and now that is some hot controversial stuff. With the feds eager to get their hands on them, allegations are flying that Diddy might have been gearing up to use these tapes as leverage. And then there's Jaguar Wright, who's very straightforward. She claims Diddy has been persuading behind the scenes to climb to his current status. Things get even more mysterious. There's chatter about some girl, who has apparently been trying to sacrifice Diddy. Now, let's talk about mentorship and influence. Back in the 90s, when hip-hop was just starting to gain mainstream traction, Diddy had a vision that this genre was going to dominate the music scene. He shared this vision with Clive Davis, who was convinced enough to bankroll Bad Boy Records. Now, let's clear up something about Clive Davis. He's openly bisexual, having shared his experiences and attractions in his memoir and on Katie Couric's talk show. During one of these interviews, he discussed how his attraction to both men and women evolved over his lifetime, especially after his marriages ended. Speaking of personal details, Clive has been quite forthcoming about his relationships. He also mentioned being in a relationship with a man and also expressed his ongoing attraction to women. But when it comes to naming his partners, Clive has kept the details under wraps. Now, why does this matter? Well, Tiddy and Clive have been seen together quite a bit, attending high-profile events and appearing quite close, which only fuels speculation about the nature of their relationship. Think about it, Diddy, despite his fame and media presence, has remained pretty quiet about his personal life, especially compared to Clive's openness. This discretion leads to even more gossip. Stories about Diddy's interactions with other celebrities like 50 Cent, Ja Rule, and Usher have people raising their eyebrows. Then we got Jaguar Wright, who has really stirred things up when she decided to expose what's been happening behind the scenes with Diddy. She came out swinging with claims about Diddy's rather scandalous escapades. It gets wilder. There's this lawyer who supposedly walked in on Diddy and singer Christopher Williams in a rather unexpected situation during a business meeting. Even though some eyebrows were already raised about Diddy's character, it wasn't until Cassie decided to open up. She didn't just accuse him of being overly controlling, she dropped a bombshell by describing how he manipulated her into participating in staged encounters for its own pleasure, involving others who were, let's just say, hired for specific roles. Cassie also claimed that Diddy kept her under the influence of strong substances. Now, when these startling revelations hit the headlines, everyone was on edge of their seats, expecting Diddy to confront these serious accusations head on. But what does he do instead? He chooses to settle the matter quietly out of court, and not just quietly, reportedly with a hefty payout of $50 million. Despite the settlement, Diddy's influence seems almost untouchable. He appears to have a knack for making damaging situations fade away, including NYPD investigations. Remember Kim Porter? Well, some say there's a pattern in how Diddy handles these situations, laying low and then using any convenient excuse when needed. Then we got an incident where Exhibit opens about a night he claims Diddy took him along to a gay club for some partying. Well, we're not done yet. Comedian Fat Jewish has his own spicy story from a lavish Miami party hosted by Diddy. He narrated the incident where he ends walking into a room full of guys, hanging out in a quite cozy setup, and guess who's right at the center? Diddy, alongside Felix the Housecat, 
both seemingly enjoying a bottle of Hennessy in each other's company. Fat Jew sure did, and he didn't just keep this to himself. He went public with what he saw on a podcast, laying it all out for anyone who'd listen. Can you blame him? Stumbling upon music moguls like Diddy in such an intimate moment would make anyone's heart race. But here's the smart play by Fat Jew. He's counting on the old saying, safety in numbers. Jay Versace, once a Vine star, recently shared a story that turned heads. It all started with a viral video of women jumping on Diddy's bed. Versace found the video relatable and dropped a bombshell comment. He claimed that during the height of his fame, Diddy had invited him over to his mansion and made advances towards him on that very same outdoor bed. Well, Clive taught Diddy not just the music business, but also the darker art of making problems vanish. There's even talk about Clive's influence leading to the tragic downfall of iconic artists like Whitney Houston. Most people remember Whitney's untimely death as a sad result of her struggles with substance abuse. However, a rather chilling theory circulates online, suggesting that her demise was not just a tragic accident, but a strategic move. The theory suggests that Whitney was considered the next best thing. And who would benefit from clearing the stage for the new generation? Allegedly, Clive saw the opportunity to push younger talents like Brandy. Adding to it, an investigator reportedly found evidence of foul play in Whitney's death, including defensive wounds. And here's a particular detail. Clive Davis was hosting a pre-Grammy party in the very hotel where Whitney's body was found. Many voiced their horror, questioning Clive's decision to proceed with the event. And the scene was described by some as outright sick and disrespectful. Clive Davis did attempt some damage control after the backlash. He claimed the party was meant to be a tribute to Whitney. However, many close to her and her friends found this explanation hard to swallow. But wait, here comes a twist. There was a cryptic note passed by Whitney to Brandy just days before her death. You might think how this all connects to Diddy. On the night Whitney Houston tragically passed away, Diddy was not only present at Clive Davis's infamous Grammy party, but also selected by Clive to give a speech about Whitney. This was peculiar since Diddy and Whitney weren't notably close, especially compared to others who were much closer to her and could have spoken. Just a few days later, Diddy found himself with questions about that night while on Ellen's show, and his unclearness raised more than a few eyebrows. But the story takes another twist. The morning after the party, Diddy ended up in the hospital with a severe migraine following yet another grand event, this time at the Playboy Mansion. Looking back, Whitney's debt wasn't an isolated case of tragedy linked to Clive Davis. Lisa Lopes, another artist under Clive's wing, also met a mysterious end. And as we trace the connections, a pattern of tragedy seems to shadow Diddy himself. From the notorious B.I.G. to Kim Porter, sorrow seems to follow wherever he goes. Despite his influence, not everyone is on board with Diddy. DJ Academics, for example, has openly criticized Diddy, especially regarding his handling of the Cassie issue. Academics' own words suggest that even he speaks out more from fear than from freedom. Adding to his controversial legacy, Diddy once again found himself facing legal challenges. Rodney Lil Rods Jones has hit him with a lawsuit, marking Diddy's fifth legal entanglement since November. This lawsuit brings to light the intricate network Diddy supposedly has, helping him run what Lil Rod called an operation. This includes some heavy hitters from the music industry who works behind the scenes to ensure no traces were left of their dealings. It's said that Diddy's powerful friends, including his chief of staff, Christina, and someone named Fahim, were instrumental in keeping things under wraps. Jaguar Wright suggests that Diddy might have picked up a few tricks from his late mentor, Andre Harrell of Uptown Records. One thing is clear, Diddy's legacy is intertwined with controversy and mystery. Do you believe that there's a deeper conspiracy at play or is it all just gossip? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more intriguing insights.